Hey everybody, welcome to Hold Up. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> I am now realizing that a, a podcast hosted by two black people called Hold Up is, is, is a problem. It's a problem, but we already named it. This is this is fine. I'm just wait. Johnson. We can't do first. Okay, first of all, it might be better because it's like. This is a hold up. Like I, you're, you're, I hear what you're saying. I hear yeah, you on yeah. FM. I feel, I feel like hold up works though. I think it gets people's attention. Hey man, mean? hold up. Yeah, hold it's up. like yeah. I mean, <laughs> or it can only be called like okay. What? Listen, like, and yeah, there's yeah. no way and to that, like type that no out. No copy for that. So we no. have to go with hold up. <laughs> we gotta go with hold up. We gotta go with, all right. Hold up. All right. Well, if you heard that last part, you already know what the name of the show is. Welcome to Hold Up. It's uh, <laughs> me, Josh Johnson, writer for The Daily Show with my partner in conversations that go on way too long, Dulce Sloan. And we're going to be taking it to to the true edge, the brim of issues that don't matter at all to anybody but us. And mm. we're going to have it out. So you need to know ahead of time. This is what we do. This is how we talk to each other anyway. All right. I don't want I, I don't want anybody listening in thinking, wow, wow, they're getting heated. It's not heated. It's just the truth. It's what's happening. Sometimes mm-hmm. when you write, you have to let people know. And sometimes those people are some of your good friends. <laughs> OK, because like, Josh, how many times have we been like, I think people would call it arguing. But for yeah. us, it's just a regular like conversation, discussion people, situation. People from far away definitely think it's arguing because yeah. cause I, I have a lot of like, well, get, well, give me a second to like, I have a lot of those stunted sentences and mm-hmm. those always sound like they go in an argument when right. really I'm just trying to think. Right. So it's just like, okay, so hold up. Wait a minute. So it's like you have that thought process because it's like, there's so many times we've been talking in the office and somebody was like, y'all should do this as a podcast. I'm like, hey, man. I ain't doing this for free. I sit up and talk to Josh. <laughs> I'm already getting paid to be at work to talk to this man. I ain't finna do it on this uh, white man's internet and not get no coins for it. <laughs> so we out here, uh, me and Josh, talking about things that uh, only really, we, well, like we care about them, but I think like people as a whole care about them. I would, I would hope so. Here's the thing. Today, we're going to be talking about conscious hip hop versus... <laughs> club hits which one's better and see I think see we're already in a place that's wild because you can't say which one is better right it's which one do you I can no you can't do that listen it's it's which one you prefer okay Okay. it's like which one do you prefer because I'm gonna say because you have one that you think is like better Mm -hmm. and then I have one that I think is preferable to listen to Okay. All right. Because when we say better, what are the qualifications for that? Okay. Okay. That's a good point. Because my thing is, I'm going to go with conscious hip hop because one, I think I enjoy the journey more. It's two because you're wearing that hat. Okay. Wow. Wow. We're already (laughs) going for personal attacks that have nothing to do with the argument. I love this hat. It says achieve on the side. I. It says achieve on the front. You turn it to the side. It says achieve on the side that I chose to be the side. <laughs> it's round. Any side could be the side. You could Absolutely. have it in the back. Absolutely. I could. And then people from the back would be like, who is that achiever walking past me? I can't. I can't. <laughs> back to the topic at hand, though. All I'm saying is that conscious hip hop, it takes you, it takes you to a place that helps you digest society as it's happening in the moment or the past as as the people living in it saw it and club hits it's just heathenism you know it's just it's just sort of rubbing together listen as a christian woman (laughs) all right i don't know what you believe in i don't know what god you serve but (laughs) (laughs) we've never really talked about uh what faith you have Uh um so this is the thing it's I listen to NPR, okay? I listen to NPR. I get on CNN. I am very aware of all of the things that are happening, right? Absolutely, absolutely. This is happening here. This is a problem here. Ooh, we got to go march again, right? So... (laughs) Is that way? Is that how you react? <laughs> you, ooh, we gotta go, gotta march, go march again. again. I mean, we've been marching. My mother's. We've been marching forever. 
Yeah, we've been marjoring for a while. I feel like that's honestly just a, a prerequisite to black fitness. You know, it's just, ah, guys, we got to get out there and it is way over there. So Listen. we're going to be building these calves, going to be fighting the power. The best thing that ever happened to marching was the sneaker. Yeah. Because they, they, they couldn't was out stop it. That, that's, <laughs> when sneakers came out, they were like, who is going to stop these blacks? <laughs> Listen, because before they was out there marching in a straight church shoe. The, just yeah, when you try to march bottom. in church shoes, you really have to think about how much you care about the thing that you march it for. Because about after eight steps, you're like, hey, hey, listen, could we stay? We can still sing. We can sing and be still. Can everything be a sit in? Can everything mm -hmm. be a sit? I, would I mean, love it was. to I, sit right now. Listen, I feel would you like just. You, the sit in <laughs> came from the marches being too long. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hey, hey, listen, we can't make, all of us can't make it all the way over there. So let's just take over a lunch counter because they don't let us eat in there anyway. So let's right. just, we'll kill two with one. Let's make it happen. I'll let you help, hit me with the milkshake before I walk in these church shoes mm -hmm. for seven miles. Yeah. Because you know what? A milkshake washes off. Bunions don't. No, no. I can get a new press and curl. Okay. I can wash this dress. But my feet, on the other hand, my Achilles is going through it. So <laughs> going my through. Achilles is killing me. It, man, I mean, I understand why it's such an issue. So fucking up my ACL. Um, when I'm listening to music, mm -hmm. I don't want to think about all the shit that's wrong in the world. Okay. I want to stop. I'm here to listen. I don't want to hear about all the hardships in your neighborhood and all that other nonsense, okay? I want to hear about that <laughs> shit. Hardships. Fucking care. I don't want to hear about your local struggle. No, I don't want to hear about how hard it is in your corner of America, bruh, no. <laughs> oh, you robbing? Oh, we're, first, everybody's robbing, okay? First and wow, foremost, everybody's robbing. Wow, really bad on 3rd and ninth. <laughs> right, like, oh, well, let's go to the Bronx. Like, I don't want this play-by-play -play news story of what the fuck what's fucked up in your area like i'm not <laughs> i don't want i don't need that i don't want that because i already know i already know shit's bad over here shit's bad over here there's already the misconception that people think like oh well like the north's not as racist which is a lie and it's like oh it's not as in your face i'm just like okay so yes this man not ha might not have a confederate flag t-shirt on but he's still not gonna let you rent this fucking apartment so who gives a shit yeah, so yeah, yeah. people are like oh it's not in your face racism all racism in your fucking face if you won't let me live here it's in my face some goofy bitches in the lobby asking me to prove when i live here i'm like bitch i got a key fob if you touch me i'm gonna slap you back the fuck like it's, <laughs> we already have the shits sure sure so when i'm listening to my musica i don't want to hear that shit you know what i want to hear about when i'm listening to my musica what is that guns hoes money that's okay. what the fuck i want to hear about i want to hear what you out here doing is you getting these hoes is you taking these drugs how many bottles did you pop today like that's what i want to hear i want to hear repetitive beat that'll let me shake something that conscious rap you can't sh i was like i always think about this i was like so do they have like conscientious rap clubs like you just sitting in there thinking <laughs> with a bunch of other niggas you just sitting thinking bobbing <laughs> yeah you just bobbing back and forth going oh it's hard out here. No, bro. Yeah. I want to shake something. I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to see how many men want me to rub my butt on their pelvis. I don't appreciate that, but he people, see what happens. He could be a nice are, man. People are throwing books at people putting their clothes on. Right. Like, oh, it's like this thing in here a jacket. Are all y'all wearing a jacket? Everybody got too many clothes on in this club. So. Okay. Okay. I don't, I want, like, for me, it's like, I don't want to say like escapism. Mm -hmm. but it's like i already know about all of the shit that's bad Got i don't you. need you i don't need you to put the news to a beat i don't need that so i will say this okay so you you have perfectly made your point and teed me up for mine because mm. Mm, the guns the hose the money the butt rubbing it's it's all it's since it's all the same i can't yeah. i can't after a while you lose me you know, but, it's like, so, I want you to rub on my butt like this. I want to rub on your butt like that. It's just, it's, it's not only a bit repetitive, but it's like, I can guess the ending of the song. Okay. But in your social conscious rap, 
Mm -hmm. I can also guess the ending because y'all still out here being broke. The government still, the cops are still killing us. Like fuck the police is a song that can come out every single year. Sure, sure. Like we're not like, it's the same thing. We're not learning new shit. Yeah. Nothing new is happening. Nothing is truly cha- You're still what? The what are you? What's the new topic? Gentrification. What are you talking about now? Dogecoin. Are you trying to fix the hood? Are they? <laughs> that's what. You, that's not what's happening in these songs. No one's giving you like, hey, we gonna strategize. Like no one's like, Commons not telling you how to win a local election. Like that's not happening. They're like these are the so, fun. You know. Hmm. That that is that is good then. That means that the only thing missing bridging this gap between us would be a conscious rap that wasn't about something that happened. It was it's about a plan. So if, if you if you heard a song that was about a plan that was like this is how we're gonna take over half of Mississippi, you would be down for it. You couldn't do bop, something. You couldn't bop to it, but you could you could be like, oh, okay, this is a nice flow and a good plan. I like this plan. I mean, isn't the goal always to bop though? You gotta get if, if it's not a bop, I mean, people ain't gonna listen to it. So you get, still gotta get somebody a bop. Here's the thing about bops though: people are now, especially with club hits, people are now forgetting to even check for the lyrics. You don't know what you're bopping your head to. You could be bop, you could be bopping your head to just pure unadulterated gang violence on you. The song could be about beating you, and you're like, man, this thing slaps, and then all of a sudden yeah. people jump you, and you have no idea why. My thing is, I truly understand that the J. Coles of the world, you can't you can't really dance to it. You can't really like 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 swing your hips. But oh, if he can't ride a flow, if he if he if he can't put something out there that not only I understand that you don't want to think as much because this is kind of like how I like. I think that we're, this mirrors our personalities, though, because mm-hmm. I very much like documentaries and you very much like Korean dramas, you know? I love a documentary. The problem is all the documentaries now are about true crime, and <laughs> I don't want to see true crime. Also, it's always true crime documentaries about white people getting murdered. Like, niggas get murdered. People of color get murdered. Like, y'all ain't trying to do no cold case of, you know, a black man who was incarcerated uh, yeah, yeah. And he was an innocent person. Like yeah. the Innocence Project, if the Innocence Project became a production house, they'd win yeah. every Oscar. Can I, can I, I, I'm digressing for a second, but this is that you just reminded me of this. As someone who has seen real crime. Yeah. <laughs> this is messed up, but like. I wonder what it's like when you see a crime and then you see a documentary about that crime and you're like, man, they should have interviewed me. They got it all wrong. This is, Listen, this is nothing like what happened. I, yo, was, man. I was there for it. I'm in the shot. I'm in the shot. And they didn't get me. Listen, I had a neighbor on gangland one time and my mother was like, <laughs> this is nonsense. This is absolute lies. Lies. It, None funny. of this was happening. Like she was so aggravated because she, she was just like. They wasn't doing half of this shit. So yeah. when it came out, we were like, like me and my homeboy, like I was talking to my homeboy and my like and his sister, it were like, this motherfucker was lying. Like the yeah. whole time we was watching it. And then there was some dude on there who was supposed to be in the gang. Yeah. And then nobody knew who he was. So like they just hired some actor. I'm like, they didn't have enough of a story because this gang wasn't doing what they said it was doing. Yeah. Also, you were a gang in the suburbs. Like, calm down. Like, they must have just ran- like, I don't know if gangland that week was just out of gangs. And yeah. it was like, well, we heard about this over in Gwinnett County. And I'm just like, hey man, this is wild. But um <laughs> this is like <laughs> But my mother was like, this is nonsense. My mother literally went, they should have interviewed me. I'd have told them. I was like, the last thing you need is to be on gangland. The thing that I love about gang glad type stuff, though, is it's a perfect opportunity to hype up your gang. So you could be like, a lot of people don't know, we killed JFK. That was us. (laughs) They thought we weren't really out here like that, but we've been out here. Okay? And we we got that mad. All right? Could and you then, imagine if, like, it was like Maldito Stress? It was like, yeah, Holmes, we got JFK. We got JFK. <laughs> all right. And the FBI was so scared that they covered it up. Right. What if the Crips free? What if the Crips just killed JFK? I imagine they, they could have done it, but by accident. They have no. <laughs> 
they just saw a drop top and they were just like, yeah, they that's that like, fool. You're like, oh, that was the president? Nigga, damn. Yeah, that w- that's our bad because he was going to sign that voting rights bill too. He was Ooh, definitely going to sign the I... Civil Rights Act. Fuck. We should have asked more questions. <laughs> So here's the thing about club hits. All right. Okay. (laughs) The other thing is that this is this. I'm going to make this point Mm. and I'm I'm excited. You don't even want to make it. I'm excited to hear your counter, though, because I, I, I understand I'm stepping into. To precarious waters. So basically, a lot of the club hit game is so rigged that I honestly have a hard time respecting it. There are some, like Atlanta is a great example. Atlanta club hits are authentic. They're yeah. like they're like people run up on a DJ or they have a friend that that can get their stuff played and then some people play it, then they play it in that club. People follow that person on Instagram, DJ gives them a shout out, they build up a real following and everything. Mm-hmm. But the the rest of the the game at large, the broad like brush strokes of music it's still the same like label payola type thing that we pretend we aren't still doing from the 70s or whatever like like it's still very much like okay i have the back of this person to get me a feature by this person and get pumped up by this person so now all of a sudden my club hit is 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 like on fire but i'm like if this was if this had to exist in a vacuum it would have never got here whereas i feel like a lot of conscious songs don't really have that problem it's like most of the most of the conscious rappers that i enjoy are only semi-famous they're not like because the shit level. is boring them niggas still work at office depot because nobody fucking cares that's the thing like nobody is like sitting up running them to a club is like hey let me hear this i don't even know no socially conscious rappers because that's how much i don't care but <laughs> So give me a socially conscious, like a real, like socially conscious rapper, like a conscious con. Like give me a uh, name no one. name. Okay, I've heard a no name. Yeah, but no name is not no name is is not Cardi B. No name is not like like she is at a place where I I don't think this should happen, but I think very well she is going to plateau where she's at because now the people that know about her love her, talk about her, and everything, but for whatever reason it doesn't spread even more. To, Every, to like everything hits everything hits critical mass like at a certain point you're just famous Mm-mm. like there's not new people like brad pitt is famous he's established right mm-hmm. like angela bassett established like angela bassett legit famous but yeah. loretta divine is not as famous as angela bassett mm-hmm. but loretta divine like it's crazy because like i feel like sometimes like certain people are like black famous mm-hmm like, a lot of time when I'm on the shade room, they'll be talking about people. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. Who the yeah. fuck is this? Like, there's so many people they talk about on the shade room. I'm like, I don't know who any of these motherfuckers are, but I should know. So, but I think the other thing that I think about, like, when it comes to, like, socially, con- like, conscious rap or, like, stuff like that is, like, like, when I think about, like, first, like, the number of, when I look at, like the number of white people that try to like talk to me about like rap, like music. If it's, if it's a white girl, she's asking me if I know who Lizzo is when I'm just like, well, first of all, I'm not Lizzo. So leave me alone. Uh, second beat it lady. Like I get it. Go away. Stop talking. You're not going to connect with me on this. Okay. Talk to me about little Wayne, you goofy lady. But when I look at like, like, what I think about the number of white people that's like, well, I'm really into old school hip hop. But I'm like, really? Because we are done with it. That's why we call it old school hip hop. <laughs> no. Like, it's not. Because, like, if you think about, like, hip hop back, like, because the, the style changes so much. Because mm-hmm. at first it was all conscious, right? Sure, sure. And then there was a break, like a whole, you know, like a Protestant Catholic situation mm-hmm. where it was just like, we're all doing the same thing. And then there was a break where it was just like, I just want to have fun. I just want to, I just want to go out. I want to dance. And that is it. Cause I am very aware of like who consumes what. So it's interesting that people are like, well, cause they try to act like that, you know, black people don't contribute to the American economy whatsoever, which is wild. Cause we are some of the biggest consumers. But when it comes to like, when I talk, when it's like, it's conscious rap music. Mm Mm-hmm. The people who are talking to me about conscious rap music a lot of times are white people. Mm-hmm. 
So it's like they're getting new information because like as black people, because we're not the dominant culture, because we're minorities in this country, quote unquote, we have to know all of the white things. Yeah. But white people aren't required to know the black things. That's fair. So they're listening and he's like, oh my God, I didn't know that this was such a problem. I'm like, what do y'all do all day? What do you do? Like, how do you not know that there are issues in other community? Like, it's that's the thing that's always been wild to me, where it's just like, I'm just, I just wasn't. I mean, are y'all really sure? Like, when are you're you asking, sure? Are you sure? Like, when I, like, if I interacting with him, like, I've had a dude like be aggressive to me and like rude to me on set. Mm-hmm. And then I had someone say to me, Well, is that your perception of it? And I just went, I don't, I don't need that. Yeah. That's not helping at all. I don't need you to second guess what I'm doing. What I need you to do is listen to what I'm saying and fucking fix it. Yeah. That's what I need you to do. So in those situations where it's just like people just second guessing, like what you're saying and what your experience is. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when it comes to stuff like this, it's just people going, well, I didn't know they were going through so much. So they're like catching up on news that happened 20 years ago. Cause yeah, like that's fair. Cause it's like now, like as I was saying before, it's we're gonna dance forever, we're gonna shake forever. Like I feel like that's why sometimes like when a bunch of black people laughing bothers white people so much because no matter they've done all of these things for all like we've literally been in America for like four hundred and two years. Mm-hmm. And it's gotten better than it was before, because before yeah. we were stolen and brought here answers were stolen and brought here as property so it's better than it was before but we're still dealing with things that we've been dealing with since jim crow Mm -hmm. it's like jim crow ended on paper but now it's like we desegregated schools and now they've resegregated schools but they've done it so slowly you just look up and you're like wait a damn ain't no white kids at this school what the they got us again so when I look at stuff like that, it's like, we are, what are we doing? Cause we're, there's still going to be the break happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like the, like the split happened for a reason. Cause it just gets to the point where you're just like, every time I turn on a record, I can't hear about this shit because it's like, is there conscious R and B or is that just Neo soul music? I mean, it, yeah, he, he might be alone in that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or is it just spoken word? Also, spoken word. Ugh. It's just poetry. What are we doing? <laughs> it's just poetry. It's low-key rapping. Like, what are we talking about right now? Yeah, but, I do feel like spoken word is for conscious rappers who have trouble staying on beat. <laughs> you know, they're like, uh, I just got to go with, you know, my God giving gifts. Let me be the beat. And then they there's like that that bass is throwing me off let me just do my thing because it is it i mean i've never seen a a spoken word poem that i thought was like oh this like i felt before that some of them should be songs but then i was like no there's no beat to like like his top end and his back end are like completely so i guess if he had a beat switch he could make it work with both but that's that seems too hard now but they're He's, all doing. But the thing is, they're all doing the same. It's like, like, have you ever been in like a salsa club? Yeah, but so it's basically the same song all night. It it kind of is, but some people like. <laughs> so I don't know if you watch any spoken word. Uh, I used to when I was in high school. Absolutely not. And two things happened. There was a big schism in spoken word where some of them stayed with like that, like bongo beat type yeah. like and my brother like that that yes. thing and then other ones really did start like almost rapping but they would just go so fast until they were out of breath and you would actually hear them go <gasps> like it was it, like you could hear them gasp because they were just like streamlining the whole poem and, and my brother i'm trying to tell you that it's like yeah. you're not twisted just tell me the words yeah and both of them couldn't go to a beat they stopped doing the okay so this is <laughs> so they stopped doing the fast thing because it made no sense no 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 I, I wish but uh in chicago 
I went to a open mic night a couple times, like as I was getting into stand up. It was a mixed open mic. It was like stand up a little bit Gross. of everything. Gross. And there was this uh, guy that would do spoken word. And the first two times he. <laughs> The first two times he brought Bongos, but even he could tell he couldn't keep up with what his hands were doing. So <laughs> then the next two times I saw him, he didn't have any Bongos. He just left him at home. I mean, you have to realize, because it's like that kind of like beatnik thing from the fit. Like, it's funny because like the only people, like certain people still swing dance. Mm -hmm. And then like this beatnik, like the rockabilly kind of vibe that some people still fuck with. Yeah. And then like the fifties was such an amazing time. Um, <laughs> kind of rough for everybody, basically. Uh, it's like black people went, yeah, that beatnik shit, we'll keep it. And then just turn into spoken word. Yeah. Cause okay. So where does Kendrick Lamar fall on this? He's, I think he falls in conscious because of the, the damn album and the Pulitzer. Like, he was already, like, Section 80 and the Pippa Butterfly, all that stuff like that. Those weren't really... He did kind of bridge a little bit because he had songs like... Um, he had songs like I. He had he had songs like like DNA. He had things that people, like, bop to in a, in a way that was not, like, club dancing, but it was like they were really rocking with it and everything. So he's sort of, like an outlier of a lot of these other people because he but like if you played be humble in a club mm -hmm. it would bop like people would dance to that so yeah. he kind of found a way to like bridge it mm -hmm. i am not <clears throat> what what blasphemy what are you <laughs> go ahead and say what you're gonna say because i'm already upset <laughs> go ahead and I do enjoy his music, but what I will say is that I'm not a huge Kendrick Lamar fan because I think he sounds like a Muppet. So you could have stopped at not a huge fan. <laughs> See, this is this is what you do. This is this is your whole vibe. You like to put your foot on the line and make sure your toe is over it. Like <laughs> Why, Ten what, toes down, baby. Why? Why would? Why would you even need to include that? But I, I can respect you not being a huge fan. I'm just saying. I think. But that, when you <laughs> say you're not a big, like when you say you're not like a Kendrick, people are like people want quantifiers. Well, why? Well, what is it? And my reason is, his voice sounds like it's being done by Jim Henson. That's my, okay. it like a Frank Oz kind of like just Sesame Street Muppets Take Manhattan. More like a Muppet. Unless Sesame Street, way more Muppet. So like, what you so here's the thing. First of mm. all, you owe those people nothing. Second, the qualifier doesn't make it better. The qual like the qualifier is only gonna take what you're doing right now, which is taking a Kendrick Lamar fan and coming to you actually had common ground and then you decided to jackhammer it. You had like I was like, hey, you're not a huge fan. I, I can live with that. And then you were like, let me throw in a couple things. Yeah. I like what he's saying. I just don't like. I, I can I can say this. I'm very into people's voices, right? Okay. okay. So that is important for me. Like I I listen to like the quality, the timbre of someone's the musicality of someone's voice, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to me, if you sound like you should be standing next to Gonzo, I'm not. I'm not really gonna be so i will i will ask you this question about okay. club hits in general i All understand right. what you're saying about the the consciousness sometimes being a bit too much but here's the thing i i there there's two points that i basically want to try to make simultaneously so address okay. whichever one of them first that you that you feel needs addressing one i would make conscious socially conscious rap only a part of the pie of what I feel like conscious rap is. Sometimes mm. I think conscious rap is just all outright lyricism, like all, like outright saying anything. Because it because I understand the socially conscious stuff is is exhausting to a to a degree, especially when you live it. And you know, being at the Daily Show, we have to read about it and and like yes. work in it. So I understand needing a break and not being like I want a reminder of what I left when I go home. But I think that 
when you take the time to put in incredible alliteration and and like all of these aspects of poetry into your lyrics i i personally only me personally also put that in in a conscious vibe because i'm so you think there aren't club rappers that are writing good lyrics I think that there are some, but I think that overall, the same way that you told me that, like, hey, at a certain point, we we get it. I yeah. think that that's how I feel about a lot of club hits because I'm like, here are all the things that I at least that because of, because of who I am, because I'm like, you know, you know me, but if if you're listening, you might not. I'm mm-hmm. like a nerd. I'm like I'm like a pretty. Uh, would you, would you, what would you call it? I'm like, you a got that book learning person, you know? Yeah. So, you got the book learning. You real chill. So, um, I, I mean, don't I don't have as much with the club themes. So that that's why I'm, that's what knocks me out of it. Cause I'm just like, well, I don't drink. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm more of a relationship person. I don't, <sighs> I can't do the, the, the mushing together with strangers. You know, I, I have to, I have to know a person. So a lot of that, a lot of that stuff is is out for me. I mean, I'm not some harlot out here just rubbing up against any man, any Tom, Dick, and uh, Jamal. I, uh, I didn't say that was that was it at all. <laughs> I'm saying that's what knocks me out. I'm not talking. <laughs> I hear you. I mean, it's like you know, sometimes you know, some man starts rubbing on you, and you're like, okay, sir, get off me. You feel broke. Beat it. Um, wait, 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 wait. Sorry to digress again. Mm. But how does somebody dance broke? <laughs> how does somebody it's a, it's a, how it's does somebody dance behind you broke? <laughs> it's a feeling. It's it's a vibe. It's a it's a just a it's just a knowing. Like I've only probably been in a relationship with like one really good man, mm-hmm. and he okay. was a convicted felon. So, <laughs> which is neither here nor there. So. <laughs> Just to, like the American justice system hates us. Uh, but like, for instance, I can spot a trash ass dude from 50 paces. I okay. can feel him. Right. Okay. Just like I always know when I see a theater kid, you always know, like within five seconds of talking to somebody, like when people are like, I'm a comic. And it's like, no, you're an open micer. Like, stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like the same kind of thing. But there have been times where you just be out and some dude will just come up behind you. And you're just like, dude, No. Because, like, mm-hmm. some days you go out, you're like, I just want to dance with my friends. I'm not here to give some man a partial erection. Get off me. Right? Now, this is my so, question. So, I had a dude. So, we were out one night. Because, like, I quit wearing heels to the club. Because I was just like, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is why stupid. Yeah, yourself? Right. I don't want to be in this girl. I don't want to be in the group of girls around a pile of shoes. Like, I'm okay. Keep, <laughs> keep dropping cups in here. This floor is slippery. I'm busting my ass. This is all a fire hazard. I'm not doing it. But this dude came up behind me one time at a club in Atlanta. And I was dancing. And then he came up behind me and I stopped moving. And he was like, hey. And I was like, no. And he started hitting me on my side. And I was like, sir, I am not Seabiscuit. Stop hitting me on my side. I'm not I'm not doing it. No, that thank you. Wild. And, and when he came up behind me, I was just like, mm, I feel unsavory individual. Uh, <laughs> like sometimes you just know there's a criminal behind. Like sometimes you just know they're like, this is not a good part. There's plenty of times I've been tricked just recently, just ah, fooled. But also sometimes you just want to go out. You want to be with your friends. And I don't want some man behind me. Right, like off me. Get yeah, off yeah, me. Yeah. Beat it, nerd. So like I understand. But there is those times where I'm like listening to like, you know, club hits and stuff like that. Where I'm just like, all right. Yep. We're drinking again. We're drinking again. We're taking mm-hmm. all the drugs again. We're getting these hoes and all that other shit. So it's just... You can get too full of one or the other, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like when you go to like a Latin club and they're just like, okay, we're going to play merengue for a little bit. We're going to play bachata for a little bit. We're going to play salsa for a little bit. Because like if you're just hearing like a salt, like salsa all night long mm-hmm. or bachata or merengue or any of that, because of the dance that you do to those songs, it's basically like the same melody just set a little bit different. And then it's just someone else singing about being in love. So... After a certain point, you're just like, I can't hear this song again. But if you put on Suave Mente, it's going down. Please know that about me. But <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel the way about Suave Mente like I feel about Nuck If You Buck. Like, that's where I am. 
with both of them. It's just like, yeah. if it comes on, I know all the words, it's going down. We used to sing it in the hallway in my high school. Um, so just somebody would just be in the hallway and somebody would yell, suavemente, and everybody going to class would go, besame, and then we'd go keep, keep going to class. So mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. in the Jodeci, ooh, yeah, we had fun. So, but it does get to a point where you're just like, I can't hear about this club shit anymore. I can't hear about this social shit anymore. Mm-hmm. You just have to. That's why I get confused when people like don't listen to like different genres of music. Like, yeah. so this is all you listen to. I have met people like that. It's wild. I'll throw on like it's literally. I have like the other day I listened to Ariana Grande, mm-hmm. a bachata song, and then a gospel song, and this was one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I feel I, like <laughs> people I have people who are, would agree with me about conscious rap that only listen to it and they're too much for me. I'm like, hey, unless you yeah. unless, unless you're gonna go do something, we can't just sit here. Like like I've been I've been in those sessions where you just chill with a friend and they're like, Oh yeah, put on put on that other album, put on that other album and I'm like, this clearly doesn't motivate you to do anything because <laughs> Because they're sad, Josh. Because they're sad. At least when you're listening to Lil John, you just want to get up and run around or just yell, yeah. Like you want to do yeah. something. Yeah. I, but those Lil I think John those is the soundtrack to my friends getting arrested. That like like no. <laughs> I'm telling you, that, that's a, I think that's the other reason why I don't mm-hmm. vibe with club stuff as much. Cause I just I have a lot of bad memory. Okay. This is that this may have to be cut. This is fine though. But uh, I went to a club one time where it was a local. You talked about you don't want to hear local conscious rap. That's yeah. like what's going on over there. Yeah. What I tell you that a lot of because you're from Atlanta, so I think I, I think yeah. I can safely say you've been spoiled with good like underground hip hop beats. Good. Oh like, no, a lot of it's trash. A lot of the times you'll see some dude. And you're at a club or something or a bar, at, you're at a club, and then they'll just have some local act come up and just tell you what's happening on, like, Boulder Crest. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, Nigga, that's one street, dude, or, like, whatever they're doing on, like, the south side. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, man, like, you got to also, I think you're dry snitching, first and foremost. Yeah. First Especially, and foremost. That's, that's, I think that's my other issue, is that a lot of these, these club hits are not they're not put together in the most creative way so then you no. just end up presenting exhibit a in court like like you don't you don't have anything else to say you don't have any sort of flowery language to hide the fact that this is exactly what you did like like <laughs> yeah it's like okay and i shot him and I, it was like the you know there's like a whole key and peel sketch about it yeah where and i shot just, him and it was tuesday and it, it yeah at a certain like, point it, you're like guys I, you're making me nervous because I'm here to watch the show. Like they might take right, all like, of us. I'm an accessory to what's happening right now. But it's like, but I think there there's a place for both of them. I just think for me, it's. I mean, I do understand that it's a way to let people know who aren't on the up and up when it comes to like getting their news. Or before there was like social media, and you really only knew, you didn't have a whole worldwide kind of like perception of what was really happening in other places. So I think socially conscious rap could tell you what was happening somewhere else. Cause the West coast came out with some club boppers, the South known for it. But like, I don't know. Cause like, you know, one of our, like, you know, one of our friends just constantly likes to shit on like Southern hip hop Mm-mm. because he thinks that Northern hip hop is better. And I'm just like, what do you niggas do when you go to the club? Like <laughs> truly, truly. If you're in here playing Wu Tang all night, what are you really? Yeah. Because the thing is, they're not talking about that much different shit. Yeah. It's yeah. it's just the beat is different. Like your issue is like how they sound, and what the beat sounds like. But it's okay. like no one's really. I've never been to because even like those fucking like spoken word shows are kind of depressing. The neo soul shows is just like, okay, everyone in here is you're currently, I don't know how you burn incense in your own dreads, but whatever. 
So it's like, I get it. All right. White man's religion is trash. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. These crystals will help you. Cool. 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 That's what you believe in. Fine. Fuck with it. But you get in those shows. You're just like, okay, everyone's in earth tones mm-hmm. and they're still talking about fucking like, that's the thing. At the yeah. end of the day, everybody's talking about fucking in whatever way you're doing it. Mm hmm. You're talking about fucking. So, like, I think, like, a, one of the best examples, like, a socially conscious rap song that I could fuck with is, like, you know, that Tupac song, Brenda's Having a Baby? Mm-hmm. Great example of a socially conscious song that you can bop to, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. damn, teen pregnancy is a problem in our community. But also, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I also was like in college when like Lil John was popping off. Mm. When that whole crunk music shit was popping off. I yeah. was in college. Yeah. Well, that's that's a huge thing with music though is that I've been told and this is not it's not science or anything, but I I haven't been seen it proved wrong yet that whatever you listen to in high school and the early part of college is going to be music to you forever. You're never going to get broken from that thing. Like if you Probably if you not. liked a specific thing when you were in high school, even if you veer away from it, you're always going to have a soft spot for like that, that little piece of the genre. Right. Like I always fuck like, you know, it's like I was also in like middle school and like when Nirvana was popping off or like mm-hmm. um, the amount of hood at the amount of uh, I don't think that the Red Hot Chili Peppers know how many black people fuck with them. I don't I think w- they know. I, would, I don't think they would know. Like, they would, I, like no. I think they I think they might notice that there are plenty of them at the concert, but I don't yeah. think they they don't know enough to then be like, we would like to do the Source Awards. I don't know if it's that deep. Uh, I'll say that it's like all the suburban black people I knew really fuck with them. I think about like I, there's so many times where I've like tried to like listen to socially conscious rap and been like okay, and I feel like I should be taking notes. Like every time I listen to one of those songs, I'm just like, oh, we have such a we have such a, like it's just like yeah, it's holding a mirror up to America. It's holding up your mirror to up your like experience as a black person mm-hmm. in America, and I'm just like. I don't want this. I don't want this. Um, I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but like, I think like when it comes to like the lyrics, mm-hmm. cause like we can all, we can both agree that like Lil Wayne is, Lil Wayne is amazing. Like the use of a metaphor, the use of a simile, like the imagery of shit, like it's, you can don't do that. I so, I so appreciate the concession that you're making at the common ground that you're trying to build. But I, little Wayne is my one where I'm like, I don't don't really care. Okay. I, I, here's the thing. I respect his, you know, people talk about lyricism. People talk about his, um, adaptability and how he's kept his music consistently relevant over the years. I completely respect that. But overall, if you want to talk about voices, you want to talk about Kendrick's voice, Lil Wayne sounds I don't like under- six babies that got possessed by one big baby all talking at the same time. I've, ne- I've never heard, I've never heard Lil Wayne sound like a grown man. You did his first album when he was 14. What is confusing <laughs> to me about Lil Wayne is that he had a deeper voice at mm-hmm. 14. Yeah. Then he does right now, but it's just the way he perform. It's just his performance voice, I guess. I think when you hear, I think, I think when you hear him talk in like an interview, mm-hmm. he does sound like an adult. But yeah, then he sounds dangerous. Then I'm like, no, oh, I don't know if we could be friends. <laughs> okay, we both know you'd never be friends with Lil Wayne. Like I, I could try. I'm I mean, it could be. People. I mean, listen, honestly, you, you everybody needs somebody to talk to. You know, maybe I can. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, have you ever had like been friends with somebody, and one of your other friends was like, "Hmm, I wouldn't expect you to be friends with them," and you just go, "I don't know what that means, but it sounds like disrespect." Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh, your friend. I wouldn't have expected that. I'm like, I, I don't know if we're coming. gonna. I did not see that coming. I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna stay friends. We keep having this conversation, but like. Okay, it's like I, I I understand. Like my concession would be 
it's reporting the news, right? It's mm-hmm. telling what's happening in your hood. Cause sometimes like you feel like what's happening to you where you live sometimes feels like this is the only, you're the only one going through that. Mm-hmm. So like when it's like, when you have like more visibility of like, when you just increase visibility of different groups of people. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, minority groups, people with different, like, you know, plus size people, people in the disabled community, people in the LGBTQIA community, you know, the BIPOC community, like all of these groups, like we're not, we're starting to see more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. You're yeah. like, okay, this like, it's almost like a representation thing where it's just like, oh, so you know how your hood is fucked up. Guess what? My hood is also fucked up. This yeah, is what's yeah. happening over here. I can understand. I can give you that concession where it can kind of just show people like you're not the only ones going through this. Sure. But at the same time, you can't play it at a party, though. My concession to you is that I definitely, definitely have enjoyed many club hits over the years. And while I don't always I don't always vibe with everything that comes out. There's usually one about each topic that I'm like, okay, I ride with this. This is okay. this is like so so you know we talk about uh, money, sex, alcohol, all the stuff. I have at least every year I feel like I have at least one money song, one alcohol song, one sex song out of the out of the club hits that I that is just to me undeniably good. And for that reason, I can understand why going down that rabbit hole more, I might I'm. I might be more into club hits eventually. Okay. Now listen. Now when I find me a husband, right? <laughs> Maybe it'll be easier to find one when I start saying the word correctly. I don't know. Um, of course it would be invited to my wedding, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now on the program for the wedding, mm-hmm. it will have a designated time to swag surf. It is going to happen. Oh, okay. How do you feel about that song? I I can start preparing now, and okay. then and then I think I'll be good to go. In, so you don't know how time. to swag surf. I don't know how to swag surf well. Mmm, that's not required. The the way that I swag surf though, I most of the dances I think I know how to do. I've been told to stop. That seems right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I go to a club and I try to dance to one of these club hits. I'm you. I usually end up having to apologize to somebody because I don't know how it is that that no one else is knocking drinks out of people's hands. It's just me. But I'm I'm trying to stay coordinated. I'm trying to stay on beat. As someone who has known you for a few years now, you do strike me as someone who has a body that would not match up well to music. This is exactly like the Kendrick thing, because I already said what I did. I didn't need you to add to the thing. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Hold Up. Or is it called Hold Up? Hold up. Uh, 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 uh. There is no way that we can get off a podcast talking about club hits without talking about the song that has caused us the most amount of contention. And what are you talking about? You know exactly the song I'm talking about. You Don't know, you look I, at me. I tend to wipe things that I think are absolute trash from memory. I, I okay. tend to I tend to try to scrub that out of my consciousness. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. That's right. The amazing cry mob hit Nuck If You Buck. Don't act like I wasn't going to bring it up. Here's Mm-mm. the thing. Here's the thing. Mm-mm. Here's the Mm-mm. thing. Hmm. Nuck If You Buck is mm. is probably one of the songs that I most despise because it's not, it's not only is it not good. Lies. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So we were having a thing at work one day. We were talking about if there was a new Negro spiritual, I cannot believe we went this long without bringing this up. If there was a new Negro spiritual, what Mm -hmm. would it be? Yeah. I, of course said, knock if you buck. Josh came out of fucking not even left field, the parking lot of a baseball game and said, Georgia, but not the Ray Charles version of Georgia, the ludicrous version with Jamie Foxx singing the Ray Charles verse. I didn't know. I thought it had to be a hip hop song. 
if I had known it was just completely, I picked a hip hop. No, song we were just thinking any song. song. No, no, no. Any so, any song in the realm of blackness. Uh huh. I picked Nuck If You Buck that has brought many people together, but also divided so many. It, and it you has picked arrested as many people as it has set free. One, the issue was you brought up a song that only I knew mm-hmm. and you knew. Anyone we were else? Having we, the conversation because it was you right. and I talking. That's, that's right. why I did that. That's, right. that's why and then, I made it just a you and me thing because it was just you and me. I didn't know you were going to blast it out to the rest of the office. No, it wasn't blasted. It wasn't, blast it, it wasn't blasted out like that. It wasn't blasted out like that because there were other black people standing in their room. We're having this conversation and they all looked at you like, what song is that? Even Alonzo Bowden, <laughs> Uncle Alonzo, who was in the office one day, said, knock if you buck, of course. And he knew the song. Even someone who's not even, who's black, who didn't even grow up in America, who is British, was like, of course, not if you buck. And I said, why? And they're like, because of how it makes you feel. Now, I understand that you don't like this song because what did you tell me it sounds like to you? I, I, I don't remember. I can tell you because it hurt me. You said, <laughs> but it hurt me because it was accurate. Okay, it didn't hurt me, hurt me, but I was like, damn, he's right. You said that Nuck If You Buck sounds like a GED getting thrown down the hallway of a juvenile detention center. I do recall that now, yeah. Now, anyone I've ever said that to has been like, he's completely accurate. Yeah. But the song still slaps. The song still slaps, okay? And the thing is, this became a running thing in the office. So me, being the individual that I am, got Josh a trophy. That said, for knucking and bucking and being ready to fight, uh, Josh Johnson. Now, I was going to say first place, but I was telling Roy about it. And Roy said, nah, put runner up, which makes it so much funnier. It makes it so much meaner. And you also. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was. I felt hazed because I was, I was new. <laughs> I didn't like I hadn't been at the show that long and I and you mailed it to me. You did you couldn't just bring it to me like a regular Christian. You mailed it to me. So then I got sent down to 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 security to get my mail and I was excited because I had never got mail at the show before. I was like, who knows that I'm here? And I opened it up and it was that travesty. when you walked in my office holding it down by your side. <laughs> you know, if you've made it this far in listening to the podcast, you're an absolute gem. You really uh, are. We appreciate you. I just want to thank y'all for me, uh, for us listening. I didn't want to bring up Nucky if you buck at the beginning conversation because I didn't want it, uh, Josh to be mad at me the entire time. Um, but we had to bring up the pinnacle. I mean, we talked about Little John. We had to talk about the pinnacle club mm-hmm. hit. The banger of all bangers okay banger of all bangers really making me regret my concession um (laughs) thank you all so much for listening i'm josh johnson and i'm dulce sloan and you've been listening to this has been a hold up (laughs) (laughs) because we held up their lives oh yeah (laughs) we'll be back with more hold up in the future bye